right guys welcome back to full circle with joyce my name is joyce somondi wahiga once again and it's really good to have you guys joining us i see some of you guys have already checked in with us on our facebook page and i'm gonna be sending out those shout outs in a few but for now let me introduce my guest this uh segment of course we're having a woman to woman conversation uh but still encouraging our men watching to be part of the conversation by smsing into double two triple nine so with me here i have fauza belts who's the founder of fauza consultancy karibu sana to the show thank you and she's joined by joyce moti who's the director of guanipa x enterprises good to have you here as well thank you great now as women we realize that our personal experiences obviously will really vary okay and we can face so much we can um, go through all sorts of challenges and trials and mountains and difficulties but because we've been conditioned to be to try and aspire to be these strong super women mm. a lot of us stay silent about the issues that we're actually facing a lot of us um, don't come out and talk about our challenges and so today that's what we want to have a discussion about these woman to woman conversations about some of the different issues that women are facing and how we can address them so i think it should make for a very great conversation double two triple nine again is the sms line and you can comment on our facebook page as well at switch tv kenya so let's begin with one of the big issues that we're seeing today which is teenage pregnancy Fauza, maybe we can begin with you you know how how often does this sort of come up in the because you do a lot of work with young girls correct too. yeah how often does this come up it's it actually makes me really sad yesterday i was uh, with this group of young moms 15 16 17 and their mothers with two kids, one child. And I looked at these kids and I was like, where are we failing? Mm. What is it that we are not really doing right that it's causing a lot of early pregnancies in, yeah. in, at, at the moment, you know? Mm -hmm. And are we forgetting our responsibilities as parents, as moms, as dads, as teachers, as society? Mm -hmm. And um, there are so many issues. You know, it's of course sometimes it's poverty, yeah. which we all know that it's it's, it's an issue. Yeah. But what are we doing about it? So for these girls that you're talking to, do a lot of what do a lot of them sort of pinpoint or attribute them finding themselves in early pregnancies to? Well, like some of the girls actually they were from Mombasa, mm -hmm. yeah, and. Uh, Talking to them, they actually said to me there was there was no school fees in the house, and I was asked to leave home. So where would I go? Mm. So of course she went out, and yeah, there are boys there who are always waiting for these kind of situations, right. and then they vulnerable take advantage girls. of this yeah. because these girls are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And uh, for them, when they see these boys, they feel like they are loved and they feel safe because they have been. Some of them have been asked to leave the houses, mm -hmm. but. How can a 15-year-old live and take care of herself? Right, yeah. So for me, we parents, we have a lot of work to do. Mm, mm, mm. Because we cannot only blame, you know, the girls with the, with, when they get pregnant. Yeah. We need to, in, we need to empower them. We need, we, we, we need to love them. Whether there is school fees, there is no school fees, whether there is food, because it's not their responsibility, it's our responsibility as yeah, parents. Yeah. So if we tell them you need to get out and you not know, start doing things for yourself, it's like you are sending that child out and she's gonna do what she, she, she knows best, she doesn't know best. Yeah. And this is what the issues are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, Joyce, touch on that point there, you know, because this is talking about a lot of the different situations that women find themselves in, and we end up becoming so vulnerable that you find recourse with anything, which is what these 15-year-olds are being subjected to do. And I don't know what your thoughts are about how that traverses and extends even into adulthood, university girls. Uh, there's a lot of issues we're also seeing around that age. Uh, people in their mid-20s, suddenly people are turning 30 and there's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure for marriage, babies, you know, name it. Um, what would you have to say concerning this? Well, I think also as parents we are failing because 
we've left the the children with the social media. Mm. We rarely make time for the children, and uh, they are following the tracks of their role models. So you'll find that they want to look like so and so, who is a celebrity. They it's like when we don't have the time as parents to talk to the to the to the children mm. and the social media life and the, the 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 big the big guys in the social media like the celebrities are talking they listen more to the celebrities and they're listening to their mothers mm. to their parents mm. so there's that peer pressure of wanting to be so to be like so and so if i can come and tell them that as as a celebrity i had a child when i was young and when they look at my life now I am driving a big car, I'm living well. Yeah. Then they'll start looking at that role model. I think this one works better than the education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would want to be like that other person. Yeah. So I think as parents we've failed and I also think the the foundation that we're bringing up our child mm. in. Mm. Like when we were growing up, our parents used to take us to church. Mm -hmm. You'll find that very few people are taking their kids to church. Mm. They're just letting the, chi the children grow up on their own. Because I believe, I don't know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, teach your children the ways of God, mm -hmm. and when they grow up, they will not they depart not from depart. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not functional anymore, because very few people are taking their ch kids to to the church. Very interesting point is there. And actually, yeah. let me read a comment that has come in on our SMS line. Someone says, hey, Joyce, uh, locked in from Lavington. I'm Joel. The prince <laughs> okay uh, from the county you say I come from that uh, is Busia I guess and you're saying almost 79% of the girls have kids that's primary school girls and you say that's because their parents never give them the needed attention hence making them seek it elsewhere as parents we have to learn to appreciate our own girls primary school kids you know having children that's uh, <laughs> That's a baby having it's another baby. It's a baby, baby having a baby, True. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 at least he resonates with your point that, you know, parents need to step up. Both of you are saying that parents certainly need to be the ones to step up. You guys need to, as parents, you need to be the one to teach your children who they are. You need to be the one to give them value, teach them their identity. Yes, because I think what I've, you know, based on what I do, you know, this the empowering talks, as uh, engagements that I do, you know, the speaking and the mentoring, I realize that if we affirm to our children and if we love them unconditionally with the same love that God has loved us, these girls, they will not be, you know, they will not be fooled because they, they will stand and know their identity is not defined by even, our, even their own parents or, you mm -hmm. know, the boyfriend or anyone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like yesterday, I was speaking to almost a hundred girls and this issue of peer pressure. Yeah. I have heard that we need to be in, in groups. Mm -hmm. So if you are not in these groups, then you are, you, you are like an outsider. Yeah. So you need, to, you need to associate yourself with certain kind of people yeah. so that you are a somebody. Mm -hmm. And as a mom myself, if it all starts at home, if we tell our children that you are loved at home. God loves you. We are firm to, we are firm, you know, and we, we, we speak these things with conviction, yeah? They will realize that I don't need any other affirmations from other people because I already have it. Yeah. And, you know, it's also being aware of what God says about these children, who mm -hmm. they are, mm -hmm. because we cannot get other things from people. It's only from God. Okay. And so... We, we just need to step up as parents. Yeah. Before we move away from this discussion about girls specifically, what would you say are some of those values that we need to instill in our young girls? So one is mm -hmm. faith and trust in God has come out very clearly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then the growth mindset. You know, growth, growth mindset. mindset. For me, it's, it's, it's sort of a belief where any talents, any gifts can be achieved if we put on a little bit of effort. Mm -hmm. And then when we, we empower our girls, it brings self-esteem to them. Mm -hmm. When you have self-esteem with yourself, Joyce, you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you love yourself, it's going back to the same conversation again, yeah. you don't need someone else to, to lie to you, mm -hmm. you know? For like the girls that were telling me for 20 bob, 
was like, what, what do you buy for 20 bob? Seriously. Yeah, yeah, that you're giving away I was yourself. very upset. Yeah. yeah. You know, and we need to, we need to always remind them mm -hmm. that they are enough mm -hmm. and they need to know their worth yeah. as well. Yeah. Because if you know your worth, you won't settle for anything. You won't mm -hmm. settle for 20 bob. Yeah. Absolutely true. Wow. Um, very interesting discussion there. And it, certainly it's, it's sad to hear that there are girls, our sisters out there who um, circumstance or life would put them in such a place that they feel, yeah. you know, they can give away themselves for yeah. 20 shillings or yeah. 50 bob. Really sad state of affairs there. But um, let's talk then about other issues facing women today. Marriage and family is a huge one. A lot of pressure to be married before 30, have I don't know how many children, you know, what is with this pressure? And sometimes it's other women <laughs> giving it to their to fellow other women. women. I yeah. know. It, I think it's crazy, right? Because you can only get married if you're ready to get married. True. Because this is not a joke, it's a commitment. Mm -hmm. And it may look cute, <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of work actually, you know? <laughs> sure is. It is a lot of work and <laughs> you cannot just go in for going in. You need yeah. to be intentional. Mm -hmm. Why are you going in for this thing? Mm -hmm. Just to, to have the title Mrs. So-and-so? Mm -hmm. Is that what you want in life? Yeah. Is that your purpose here on earth? Yeah. And so you, you, need, you need to ask yourself, am I ready for this? Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. is no age limit choice. You yeah. can, I have friends who they are in their thirties and they're not married mm -hmm. and they're very happy mm -hmm. you know but society actually has programmed these kind of things we go to school universities we grow up mm -hmm. we need to get married we need to get kids of course we'll be working for sure yeah. <laughs> and then what else yeah is yeah. that all about life yeah but Joyce, why is it that women sort of put this pressure on their fellow women? You know, there's always that quote and that, that saying, you know, true queens will fix each other's crowns. Mm. Yeah. But there's also the one that says a true queen will fix her sister's crown mm -hmm. without telling the whole world that yeah. she's fixed her crown. That yeah. it was crooked. Right? That it was crooked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, what is it about us women? Why is it that we cannot seem to understand or at least practice that saying to see that, you know what, we actually need each other. If yeah. you rise, I rise. And we can pull each other up together. Yeah. I also think it's about the pressure because when you get at a certain age, when you go to the village, they'll start asking you, your peers are already married. What are you waiting for? Mm. Or what is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's why we end up, people end up getting married for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Because you want to fit in because your friends are doing it, your age mates are married, you're not married. Yeah. So you just go and get married. Yeah. That's why we're having many failed marriages. Yeah. Because when you're in it, when you're already inside it, you realize then this is not what I wanted. Mm. So I'd rather people just wait on God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, your SMSs are really coming in, guys. Uh, let me read some of them now. Teenage pregnancy is mostly caused by a lack of responsibility by parents, more so when it comes to providing education facilities to a girl child. Many parents fail to satisfy their children, hence making these children take a step ahead to seek help from friends. And that's actually from our caller this morning, Emmanuel Professor Manu Asante Sana for that. Um, someone else says, hey Joyce, I'm really grateful you're addressing this issue. Myself, I have grown up very distant from my parents and I've thought of engaging in all these issues and witnessed my peers who were very firm and resolved stray away. Indeed, something is wrong somewhere and that's from Sanya. Asante Sana for that comment, Sanya. We're going to take a break right now, but we'll be carrying on this discussion when we come back. Also talking about women today and empowerment, financial stability. What about women lifting the next generation of women and women and faith? Okay, so much more for us to discuss right here on Full Circle with Joyce. Stay tuned.
all right guys welcome back to full circle with joyce and we're here having a very candid woman to woman discussion on some of the issues affecting us today and of course we're inviting your feedback and your comments double two triple nine is the sms line you can also reach us on our social media platforms at switch tv kenya on facebook and twitter and at switch tv ke on instagram i'm gonna be reading those out shortly but let me just reintroduce my guests here i have fauza belts who's the founder of fauza consultancy and joyce morty who's the director of guanipa enterprises asanteni sana thank for your you, company you. once again you. now you know we were talking about teenage pregnancies just earlier and a lot of you guys have uh, really commented in and uh, shared some of the things not only your perspectives but even some of the things that you'd like us to touch on so let me just look at facebook for a moment victor muhoro you say i just love this show joyce uh on fleek as usual well thank you very much and your show really inspires me thank you victor for watching uh pacho ranking you say you're tuned in from kinale and you're really enjoying the show queen joani here asks a really interesting question which is about rejection by sister-in-laws and we could even say mother-in-laws right so this is another issue that women would be facing but let's focus in on the sister-in-laws because you know <laughs> a mom's relationship with her son very different okay mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what maybe we'll have to do another day but you know when your brother decides that he's marrying someone right i mean surely you'd think there'd be a measure of support coming at least from the sisters mm. I, again i'm putting the mom aside because that's mm. a different situation yeah. perhaps but um you know when someone is re being rejected by their sister-in-laws you know those sister-in-laws who just make it stress Gosh. for you to be in that house yeah. I don't know. Hopefully you guys didn't have that experience, but I know a lot of people out there have. Um, what, what does that tell you, really, uh, when our own family members, uh, should be family members, mm. are the ones who seem so bent <laughs> on tearing uh, women down or tearing this particular woman down? Well, I think, you know, you are coming in as an outsider. There is always a question. Mm -hmm. Depending on the family, you know, and sometimes people will be like, what I, what's her intention for my brother? Mm. Is it his money? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it the family name? What is it all about? Mm -hmm. And, well, I thank God I really, <laughs> I really didn't have this choice. I'm really grateful that my family-in-laws, they took me in like their own child. Yeah. So I didn't really had to experience those, but I have friends who they have gone through those things. And yeah. it's hard, it's painful because you are not a competitor, yeah. you know? And the fact that the brother loves you, mm -hmm. you it's, his in, it's, it's his choice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, so how, would you, how would you advise someone though, finding themselves in that situation to manage it? You know, woman to woman, what would you say? I think your husband needs to chip in. Because okay. this has nothing Actually, to yeah. do with you. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. the one who is bringing you into his family. So he should be the one telling his people, yes, I know she's coming in from somewhere else. She's an outsider. Mm -hmm. But this is my choice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we just have to make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very interesting there. Let me mm. read a question here. <laughs> I mean, a comment here on face on our SMS line. Someone says, uh, speaking about marriage again, someone says, I think it's just the society that has overrated the fact that when you get married, you are responsible. I love that comment. Yeah. Uh, and that's why Philip locked in from Busia. Certainly, you know, getting married isn't a, isn't a measure of your IQ <laughs> or even your emotional intelligence Absolutely or your not. worth as a human mm -hmm. being. None of those things. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, yeah, if we put it in general, you know, as women, we need to, we need to know ourselves first, mm -hmm. because if we know ourselves, we know our values, right? I don't need, this is what I say, and I see it living as an expert in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we women, the mistake that we do, we identify ourselves with our spouses. Mm -hmm. But who are you without your husband? Mm. Who are you without that boyfriend? Mm. Who do you call yourself? So we need to realize these things. And having that, you know, that mindset that with or without my husband, I am a somebody because mm. my identity is not aligned with my husband, mm -hmm. yeah? 
it has to come first from first God. from God. Yeah. yeah. But you can only articulate this if you know your values, you know your worth, and you love yourself unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Because your husband is not gonna love you the way you should love yourselves too. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 He's a human being. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Yeah. You know. So we need we need to really sit down for ourselves and really find out who am I mm -hmm. and what does God say is about me, mm -hmm. so that we can you know. So that if that love doesn't work well the way we, we want, mm -hmm. you know, the way you expected, yeah. then you, you know, you will... It's not like your life is over. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Because you have an identity that's bigger than marriage. Yes, and it comes from God. It's not even your husband. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, I've seen it with women. When that, you know, don't put your identity with your husband. Yeah anything can happen and then sure. what and that's why you see women going through depression these are real life stories these are real things that are happening mm. today in 2019 it's true it's true and Fauza you I mean she's she's raised this um, topic about faith right and uh, I want Joyce to touch on that just a little bit you know how in your opinion let me say how important is faith in a woman's journey just given all of these different things that we're handling right relationships, business, career, children, uh, taking care of our homes, taking care of ourselves, trying to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of standards of beauty, intelligence. I mean, we're expected to be a superwoman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for you, what role does faith play in all of that? I think faith plays a very big role because faith is what you believe in. Mm -hmm. If as a woman you can believe that I am a woman and I can do it, you sure can do it. Mm -hmm. Faith, I'll go back to, to, to our beliefs, our religion. As a Christian, the, the Christian faith, as a woman, you need to know how to pray for yourself. You need to know where you get your power from. Mm -hmm. you, you need to know that there is a superior power somewhere that you can lean on mm. and um, I think that's that's where you can get the you can get the strength from yeah to be a woman as you go about your your life okay yeah okay yeah. well let me read another comment here hello Joyce I think when women support each other great things happen it all starts within us women we need to love each other and support each other unconditionally that's Marion watching us from Mombasa thank you so much for that comment there someone here says uh, hey Joyce loving the conversation you don't leave me your name though or where you're watching from but I do appreciate you Mike Kandegwa from Nyandara all Joro or Rock you say you're tuned in you say you're actually glued up <laughs> by it asante sana shout out to you as well cynthia enjoying the show from ruaka now as we get ready to wind up this conversation let's talk about women and empowerment and financial stability again a lot of people sort of run to marriage for that stability mm -hmm. um uh but you know just speaking in generally about women and how we then by empowering ourselves can actually help empower other people and i want you to touch on the next generation of of women um because we want to see leaders from there we want to mm. see movers and shakers from there so as you give your final comments maybe you can just touch on those pointers very briefly let's start with you Fauza. well i think um that's why we started the woman to woman conversation yeah. isn't and it and tell us about that yes. that's coming so, up this weekend <laughs> yeah it's coming on saturday mm -hmm. and i really felt that there was a need for this kind of platforms because many times like you know since the beginning of our conversation is we we don't have a place where we can share encourage fix each other's crown instead of posting it on social media mm. you know and don't just go into marriage with the wrong intentions mm -hmm you know it's why are you going in for yeah and men men they are clever men they're very clever they they know they know if you're into this for anything else mm -hmm. really and if you go in for the wrong reasons that's why it's not gonna last yeah right ladies yeah. we need to up our games it's it, it's good to have a partner who they can support in all those things you mm -hmm. know like mm -hmm. I, I thank God for that mm -hmm. but you need to be able also that 
you can also take care of yourself because if you can take care of yourself, it means you can take care of the family, the husband, and anyone else in that yeah, matter. Absolutely. Joyce, what would be your final comments on this? I'll talk on uh, the empowerment part because we need to raise our girls knowing that they can work also they don't have to get into a marriage to to rely on the husband to bring food on the table yeah. support him also they mm -hmm. need to support him yeah they need to to work they need they need to bring something on the table too mm -hmm. so it's good we encourage our our, our our girls from a small age that they can grow up and become somebody All in right. the community. Fantastic. Yes. Fauza, once again, you said the woman to woman conversation is happening this weekend. Tell us the details very quickly. So woman to woman, it's a platform for us women. And uh, we come in there, we pray, we, we encourage, we inspire, we fix each other's crown. A place where we can share our fears, our vulnerability yeah. in the hope of and building the woman for the next generation because I believe, Joyce, we are the ones we've been waiting for. All right, so where 21st, is it happening? Uh, 21st of September, Silver Spring Hotel. It's a free entry, mm -hmm. so you're all welcome what from time? 11 o'clock to 2 p.m. All right, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., Silver Spring Hotel, a uh, woman to woman conversation will be happening where you can have an extension of this discussion. Uh, but thank you both, ladies, for being here. Thank we do need to take you. a break now. We're bringing in our couch as we get ready for our lifestyle hour that's coming up uh, just at 9 a.m. Today we're looking at change makers and you don't want to miss out on hearing some of these amazing stories. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a bit. <music>